very, very quickly indeed. Toss up between um, Troy Dunstan and Blanchard as to who will make the first turn. All try to poke through there, one up with a wheel on the ripple strip as they make the exit to that turn and head down towards uh, the Triple M bend. One sideways in the middle of the pack gets it straight back on the bitumen again. And here come your Formula Fords. It's Blanchard in the new Swift, the latest model car, uh, closely followed by Troy Dunstan and also the latest uh, product from the Van Diemen factory. They head off the back straight that uh, very well, well known side of the big crocodile winding its way up as these cars battle for positions. And you can see Dunstan already having a look on the outside of Blanchard as they head over the top. Pretty clean start considering the enormity of this field as they make their way, their way to the top of the hill for the first time. First of 13 laps. Blanchard with the edge. Troy Dunstan tucked in behind. And it's real pressure driving in this class. One of them makes a false move. He will drop six or seven positions quickly. There's nothing separating the mob as they come into the sequence of right left hander that brings them back onto the main straight. And this is a track where car balance is critical and aerodynamics play a big part. So if you can make some advantage out of the hole in the air that's being created by the car in front, you're looking pretty good. And that's exactly what Troy Dunstan will be thinking about at the moment. We've got them all here, nose to tail. Seven cars covered by less than a second of the qualifying. And Dunstan goes to run down the outside, getting all oh. hung every which way under brakes, but he's done it. And Dunstan's got a lot to prove here. He won the Formula Ford Festival at Winton last year, but was later excluded for some engine irregularities. But he's back with a vengeance, and he really wants to put number one up here today. Fantastic day here at Sandown. A cloud in the sky, 32 degrees, very, very warm, and a very big crowd in attendance. Troy Dunstan leads them up the back straight out of the Triple M bend. 26 caught around there sideways into Sand Trap. He's going to bail out. Rosario Ocapinti. Van Diemen. Look, business. look at these two, wheel to wheel across the top of the hill. Blanchard had a big run up the back straight. Dunstan tucks it in, so he's lost the lead. Two Speed Tech teammates there, the two blue cars. You see Dunstan in front of the uh, teammate Paul Morris right behind them. We've got Brett Peters and Andrew Gubb in the white and swift. So five cars in this scrap. The Swift leading, bunch of Van Diemen's behind. There's a very important battle between makes going on out there at the moment, although these cars are all on the same tyres as we've mentioned before when we've covered the Formula Ford events. Same configuration engines, but a variety of different chassis, mostly from England. And here we go again. On for a lead change, are we, as they go to the braking area at the end of the main straight. Dunstan has a try on the outside, but couldn't do it that time. Blanchard has him covered. These two were great protagonists last year in the Formula Ford Championship, and it's on again. Nothing's changed. Brand new cars, brand new chassis. Brett Peters well positioned there in the Olympus Cameras entry in uh, fourth. Andrew Gubb back from the United Kingdom, where he spent the last couple of seasons looking for an opportunity over there. Back in uh, regular Formula Ford competition as the battle rages again at the head of the field. Gee, these guys are even coming up to the bridge. Starting to close up just a little behind them. Blanchard still leading it. But in fact, it's Paul Morris, I think, that stepped Dunstan on the way through. Car off on the outside down there on the wrong side of the river strip. So Morris looking very good now with ooh, length and a half, maybe two lengths over Blanchard. Handy little gap. Dunstan back in third position. Brett Peters still in fourth, Andrew Gubb fifth. Gubb was the guy that you may recall was very strong, Mike, a couple of years ago in Formula Ford. Yep. Figured very well in the Motocraft Series and the Coca-Cola Series in Sydney. And very, very strongly. In fact, Morris here trying to control Blanchard, who sits in the draft, pokes the nose down on the inside. He's got the power to continue off. It gives him the right to the turn. And Morris going in fairly deep, but Blanchard will get this. So Blanchard goes back into the lead. The seesaw continues in the opening round of the Motocraft Formula Ford Series. Swift Australia boss Mick Kouros will be loving this, seeing Blanchard lead this race. They've developed a great pedigree with this uh, maker car over the last couple of years, uh, culminating in the victory in the all-important British Formula Ford Festival last year. Here's the lead bunch. All locked together. There's nothing in this. And the beauty of Formula Ford racing. Gubb still in there as Blanchard leads up the back straight, but they close up. Morris comes for another run on the outside. There's Dunstan on the inside, or the outside, I should say, as they sweep beneath the bridge. 
There's another change. Into second spot as Dunstan comes back. Morris goes back a spot into third. And Blanchard still leads them down beneath the Dunlop Bridge. Great racing. Formula Ford devotees may be interested to know that Russell Ingalls shooked off to the United Kingdom to continue his racing over there with what looks like a Ford drive now with the Van Diemen team, I understand. He figured very well in this class last year and the previous year. He did well at Bathurst in the J.O. Holt Group A Commodore, owned by Bob Forbes, and uh, his career's kicked into uh, high gear and he's headed overseas. So the class does provide youngsters with an opportunity, and this is fabulous classic racing here. One guy bogged to the gunnels, Ooh, that was aggressive. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. That's cut and thrust. Emphasis being on cut. Another one to the sand trap. Looks like 85. It's Jared Mannion from Sydney. Try convincing any race driver that it's not good to be in the lead. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see the dilemma. This is Brett Peters making a move in the multicolored Olympus Cameras car. Yeah, Brett's really got a move on here. It's almost like he was sitting back for the first few laps to watch, but he's making a definite. He's got Morris, I think. Oh, I don't know. Got over here. He's not going to give in. The big Paul gold there again. Paul had the left side oh. of the car in the grass. This is desperate stuff. Andrew Gubb's still well positioned, but now the, the lead two have cleared out a little, and uh, it's come down to a two-horse race for the lead. Still a fascinating battle for third. John Blanchard on the left. Palm Air Entry, car number four. In behind him. Troy Dunstan, car six, with but a millimetre of road left on the outside. And ready to poke. Look, he oh. almost changed gear for him. Yep. His nose in the back of the gearbox there. He knows the part number on the, uh, the gearbox now. <laughs> the plane shows off the fraction of speed. That's all you need. Here comes Dunstan on the outside. It's going to be another breaking deal. I don't think he'll pass him there. No. Very wide. See, John that time took a tight entry on the way in. And it makes his exit a bit slow, so then Troy gets the carrot and tries to attack him down that little chute. It's a real game of cat and mouse. The problem with covering your ground and therefore driving defensively is that uh, you're not on optimum line, so you're a little slower. And as I said before, you've only got to be 100 slower in these cars and you're in trouble. There's five laps to go. There's plenty more of it to come. And it's a, a real toss of the coin to see who's going to come out on top of this one. Geez, Blanchard's doing it well, though. I mean, as far as covering his line, he's not doing anything dirty, and he's just managing to keep Dunstan behind him and frustrating the hell out of him. Gee, the Dunstan car was just a little sideways yeah. that time over the peak of the hill. It's more graphic when you're in the car there than the camera displays. It's quite a drop away from underneath you when you're all over the top of the hill. And these cars are circulating very quickly. Heading back towards the pits again. Blanchard still leading. If you look at the cut and thrust in this category, and you look at it as far as an international formula goes, and it would have to rate as the most successful international formula when you just look at, as uh, Neil suggested, Russell Ingalls' success in the British Formula Ford Festival. Took his own car over there last year, ran as high as third in the final, and now has attracted semi works backing from the Van Diemen factory. So these guys can see oh, a light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, there's the light. He found <laughs> the tunnel <laughs> that was always going to be good wasn't it right at the end of the straight that he couldn't pull it off on the outside Troy Dunstan so he had to wait and he went for a pull out of the draft and down the inside well John was really covering his ground there for a couple of laps and I guess Troy saw the strategy and figured if he could get under there he'd be away so that's what's happened it was just the puff of smoke <laughs> Blanchard coming back again and looks like he's got yep. the legs he has and look at Brett Peters he's got a good high-speed package there because he he was already wide of the slipstream and he was able to just drive by Blanchard oh fabulous motor racing as <laughs> yeah. we watch Brett Peters and Paul, Paul Morris, Morris side oh. by side and Peters comes out with an edge. These guys don't mind locking wheels. It's one of the most dangerous things you can do in an open wheeler. But it's every chance that we have five canoes here shortly with no <laughs> wheels. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, that's giving them a little break. It's Dunstan and, and John Blanchard locked in battle at the front. They've made a oh, that's about five or six car break now. Yep. And that may be all they'll need to the end. Four laps to go. Thinking about the inside, couldn't do it. Gee, it's a long way down the outside with this left hander coming up. As Dunson again is forced to sit in behind John Blanchard to run down to the Triple M curve. Dunstan <laughs> is trying every move he knows to try and get past Blanchard, but I don't think he's going to do it there. It's got everyone intrigued, the entire grandstand here 
near our commentary points on its feet. Everyone's having a look. The Formula Fords have got everybody enticed. It's fantastic to see them back at uh, Sandown too after two year absence. Great stuff. Dunstan and the uh, dragging up the back straight behind Blanchard, who I think is maybe driving a little more defensively than he was a lap ago. He's making that oh. swift look slightly wider than it was a few laps yeah. ago. Into the left hander. And while these two are carving each other up, you may find that uh, Peters, Morris and, uh, and Gubb will climb back onto the rear of these guys. I want to be quick about it. I don't think Dunstan's worried about anything else. He doesn't need to pull on anyone else in a tow. He uses a bit of the grass, the curb, and he'll try and get back on the inside here of Blanchard if he can. Just like a part of the pipe down near the guardrail on the inside. And three laps to go as they go across the strike. Blanchard on the inside. Dunstan comes back again. He's going deeper and deeper under brakes, trying on the outside. But he's tried that three or four times now. Oops. And <laughs> a little bit more. Now, there we go. He's just lost a couple of tenths and Paul Morris, uh, sorry, Brett Peters has climbed back onto the rear. There's been some fabulous advances. Oh, oh that's right out of shape. shape. Now, this will be interesting up the straight. See, that's knocked his exit yeah. speed round something fierce. Dunstan goes by. He's got to do all the work again. Brett Peters buys into the action. That was the carrot that he needed. And suddenly, what was a two-car duel for the lead becomes three. How quickly things change. It's amazing how many times this happens in a Formula Ford race. The guy at the front will be covering well. He'll be keeping it nice and smooth and straight. Then one right. little slip. <laughs> and he's taken the lead back. So he's got no shortage of power in that swift. That was amazing. <laughs> I was going to say there's been some amazing advances with the chassis in this class. The engine development, I guess, has, has largely bottomed out to some extent. I think they have around 110, 115 odd horsepower. But they keep getting faster and faster each year as people find newer and better ways of making a racing car work well. And the uh, chassis manufacturers have also been helping out the uh, the engine builders. I believe Van Diemen installed a heat exchanger in the car to uh, uh, perhaps raise the oil temperature. And apparently that. Um, created an extra couple of horsepower so well, here's derby on main street again last lap down to the left hander can dunstan do it blanchard tries to go oh. dunstan gets there now blanchard got pushed to the outside and i think he'll be regretting that but dunstan is going to make this car even wider and look at brett peters he's climbed right back onto the blanchard yeah. uh, back of blanchard's car and we're going to look at yet another slipstream duelist to come over the top of the hill He'll be looking for a toe up the back straight. They've broken away from the other group. Paul Morris and Andrew Gubb are still hard at it. Morris has the edge there at the moment in fourth. Now the dilemma, of course, for the leader is that Blanchard can... Oh, oh here oh. comes Peters. He's taking the both of them. Peters up on the inside. Has he blown them away? No, it'll be Blanchard into oh. the turn. That was very, very brave over that part of the circuit. Brett Peters. <laughs> comes from nowhere with half a lap to go. Beating the chest, Tarzan. That was something else. But it hasn't done him that much good because Dunstan's climbing all over the back of him now. He might even be beaten for second. Blanchard's giggling. He's got a gap. He's got two corners to negotiate. He's got a massive gap now in this last part of the lap. And comes onto the main straight. Some traffic to negotiate. It's still on for young and old for second. Peter's in second. Dunstan right behind him. And John Blanchard takes the win, a great drive. Dunstan lunges, doesn't make it, finishes third. Brett Peters second. Car number four, John Blanchard wins in the swift from Brett Peters, a great drive in car number eight. Position three, car six, Troy Dunstan, a bit unlucky perhaps. Andrew Gubb got up to fourth in 24, and Paul Morris rounding out the top five in car number three. We're back with you shortly.